So a while ago, I made a progression guide on EQW on different things to get at your level. And the video did a lot better than I thought. But I realized how outdated it is now and how many things I need to cover instead. So instead of making a different section for each level you're at, in this one, you're gonna want to cover every section as I'll be going through different classes, enhancements, leveling up, getting gold, how to spend ACs, and pretty much everything you need to know, especially if you haven't been in the game for a while. If you're at the start of the game, I recommend getting every starter class because they've all been buffed and they're all good now and also they're free so you have nothing to lose. However, after that we want to get a good soloing class and the first class we're going to get is Dragon Slayer. This has also been buffed and it's really OP now especially against dragons and getting it is super easy. You just have to complete these five quests and once you do it you can just buy it from the shop over here for free. And if you don't have enough inventory because it's AC tag you can just put it in the bank. In this example, I'm only using Luck and Spiral Carve, as most beginners will only have those enhancements. But it's still really OP, as you can see, we just did 50k DPS as I was speaking. So it is crazy OP now, especially against dragon monsters. It's definitely worth getting, because it only takes 10 minutes to get. Next, we want an easy farming class, and one of the easiest reputations to get to rank 10 is the Eternal Reputation. You want to click on the 4D Pyramid Rep Shop, get this to rank 10, and then buy it. This is super easy to get to rank 10 and it's so easy to use, you just spam all your skills and it does a ton of damage and it's just so good and it targets 6 monsters. Also it's very easy to get to rank 10 reputation and if you need, search up artix.com slash calendar to see the calendar of events. This way you can see when there's a double reputation boost like on the 25th of December. Click on it and it shows how long it lasts and all the info you need. This way you can make your farming twice as easy. After a while you'll want to improve your soloing class and also your farming class so the next soloing class we get is Cryomancer. So you want to go to slash join frozen ruins and there's kind of a long storyline here. Complete it then 5 daily quests and you can finally get the Cryomancer class. With only 5 daily quests, it's actually a really easy class to get now and definitely worth it, elite soloing class. As for most of these classes, I have made a guide on it on YouTube, so just search up and check the combo and enhancements. And after this, we want to get another farming class. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky. Once you're at mid game slash later game farming classes, you're actually going to want a ton of them because they're all good in different situations. Farming Arcan Grove reputation can be a pain, but it also has one of the best farming classes, Shaman. Pair this up with Mana Vamp and you'll be good to go in pretty much any map. Huge damage and also very good HP. It can also be used as a soloing class but I wouldn't recommend it. Other farming classes you can check out are Master Ranger in Slash or Insanity. And if you want to go a bit further and get a really elite farming class, you want to get Archfiend. To get this class I've obviously also made a guide, you can search it up on YouTube. But this is quite hard to get but also really really good. As I'll cover later on in the video, you could get F2KCs and I wouldn't blame you because it is very good and cheap. It can only target two monsters, so for some occasions you might want to pull out Eternal Inversionist or another class, but most of the time it will have you covered. But before you even do that or after that, you can choose to get one of your first support classes, Arch Paladin. This is a class you'll use until the very end of the game, especially for Ultra Bosses, which I'll cover later. But it's easy to get an Arch Fiend and it's very good. And it's great for soloing as well. And once you've got all these classes, you're only a few steps away from being an endgame player. The only thing separating you is two classes at this point. You want to get Void High Lord, which used to be super difficult, but it isn't anymore especially if you do its ultra boss. So definitely pick this up and with the right enhancements it's pretty much the best soloing class in the game. And after this and an even harder farm, you want to get Legion Revenant. Once again you can do its ultra boss to make it easier. You have to complete all these Legion fealty quests until you get the class which is also pretty much the best farming class in the game. Except for maybe one or two classes that can slightly edge it with the right enhancements. In terms of classes at this point you can get any class you want. And you don't need all these items, but I'd recommend getting Stone Crusher, Chaos Avenger, Archmage, some Chrono classes, and a bunch of other classes which are useful in more specific situations. And that is the classes section done. So now we're going to cover leveling up. Now I'm not going to give you suggestions on like what level you need to be to farm here, but rather how strong your farming classes are. If they're really weak, at the start of the game you want to farm a slash joint firewall. Over here, they're pretty easy to kill and they give a ton of XP, especially if you turn in these. Now, with all of these areas, you do want to have someone helping you and that would be most convenient. But if you don't, you're just going to have to tough it out and go ahead. 
Now, once it's strong enough, you want to go to Slasher and Fire Plane War, go to this room, kill these three monsters, and turn in your war medals and uh, mega war medals once you're done. You also have some quests here you can accept. Now, before you go any further, I should remind you, you do want to get an XP boosting item. The easiest to get in the game is at Slash Join River. You walk across until you get to the treasure chest, the chest shop, and you want to get... Shadow Blade of Despair, which gives you 20% extra XP. If this is too low for you, you can get the Blade of War, which also has a 25% XP boost. Not the exact blade itself, but another weapon in the same merch shop. They're both very easy to get and definitely worth it. Also, it's best to check the calendar to see when there's a server boost happening and also use your XP boost if you have any. Now, if you have friends, this might be the best place slash you in Shadow Battle on. And you can come here quite early, even if you're a quite weak farming class. Over here, you want to kill these Tainted Raids. They do have huge HP at 100k, so this is only if you have someone helping you, like this Legion Revenant here. By killing these, you can turn in quests to give you 12k XP per turn in 8k XP with War Medals and Mega War Medals. Definitely worth it when farming in a party. Once you're at level 80, you want to go to Slasher and Ice Storm Under. As you can see, a ton of farming class here, and there's like 10 monsters in the room. So you can be farming insanely quick, super fast leveling up. This is the most used farming uh, XP place and for a good reason. Obviously you want to turn off the lag by turning off animations, my screen looks a mess right now, but otherwise you're all good. The only method in the game that can beat this is by fighting Icewing. You want to go to slash join Icewing, this is once you're level 80, and kill this monster with a group. The quest gives you huge XP, 75k, and if you're a member, even more XP at 100k. With a good party, you can kill this in like 5-6 seconds, so it's super worth it. Now, once you level 60, you can actually do ultra bosses. Click on ultra quests over here, slash your own ultra as gel, 500k XP, and once again 500k. These are absolutely huge and can also be used for gold farming. Like I said, a lot of these things need a good party or friends, and you can find these in my Discord server, link in description. We also have a weekly set contest you can join in if you enjoy making sets. And sometimes we have AC giveaways, so be sure to join. Anyways, these can be done once a day. But you can go to Slasher in 7 circles and do the one time only quest, which gives you huge XP, like 70k XP per turn in. And then go to Slasher in 7 circles war. There are also one time quests here, which are no longer available for me because I have done them. Once again, I have done the one time quests here, but you can do them, which gives you huge XP. And these are pretty much all the ways you can level up really quickly. If you're a member though, which I'm not anymore, you can go to Slash Join Nightmare and kill the nothing monsters for the best XP farming area, I think. For gold farming, at really low levels, you want to start farming at Slash Join Firewall as you are for XP. So it doubles up as a bit of both. And over here, obviously, you want to turn in these war medals here and here, which with a gold boost can give you like 10k every 5 seconds. So it's actually really good with the party. Just join a really populated server, go to the first room and there should be people there. After that you can use the places I mentioned earlier which have one time only quests such as Ruined Crown and Seven Circles of War. And once you're at level 60 and eligible for ultra bosses, of course you want to do ultra Ezogile and the lore, ultra warden, ultra engineer, all super good as they give 250k gold, even when you're end game, you're gonna use this to farm gold. And once you're about level 60, I think, you go to Battleground E, click on quest, and you can accept these two quests here. These are super good, and it's my best way of farming gold. You can get like 100k every 10 seconds, so it's super useful, especially if you have a good farming class. But if you're a member, you can do uh, Honor Hall, which is even more OP. I can't join the map, because I'm not a member, but as you can see, 20k gold, 10 enemies, Join populated server, easy peasy. These are pretty much the best ways of farming gold. But also, you should be getting gold in general if you're farming a class, farming whatever, like for VHL or many other classes. Always remember to use gold boost and to check out the calendar for when there's a server gold boost. Next, we're gonna go over enhancements. The first enhancement you wanna get at approximately level 50 is the ore enhancements. Go to Slash Room Museum, find Valencia, and do the Blade of War quest. Now, I've made a guide in on YouTube, just search it up. But this is super easy to do and takes like less than an hour nowadays. It used to be hard, but now it's really easy. And once you get it, you can get this weapon plus 25% to all XP, gold, class, reputation, super good. Also, if you click on her all quests, you will find a quest if you haven't done it already. Now, this house item, you click inventory, house inventory, 
and you click on wall or plaque. Now just clicking here will give you access to all the ore enhancements no matter what map you're at. So it's a must get item once you unlock the ore enhancements. After you get all the ore enhancements, you want to get some forge enhancements. You go to slash joint forge, click on this item, click on forge quests, and you can do weapon, helm, and cape. So I think the easiest are helmet quests, and I've done the four important ones already, but you pretty much only need two of them. The two main ones you need is anima clairvoyance and numa clairvoyance, if I remember correctly. But yeah, you want to get all four, they're pretty easy to get. And after that, you want to start going over the weapon enhancements and the capes. Now, I will say, these are actually really difficult. As you can see, I haven't even done some of them. For example, Atron, this is completely pay to win and you can't get it unless you spend maybe 20-30k ACs. Hero's Valiance is more understandable, but it does require some difficult items to get, but it's definitely worth it as it can be used on a ton of items. As you can see, I've already done Dauntless, so it's going from here, but Dauntless is probably one of the most OP enhancements in the game and makes any weapon look broken. I mean, any class look broken. If you put Dawnless together with VHL, it becomes the best solo DPS class, and it's just unbelievable. It does need a long setup like some Chrono classes and instantly wipes out any monster 100k HP, 200k HP, super OP. As for the cape enhancements, they're not as hard as the weapon, but they're not as easy as the helm. So for the cape, they all have their own purposes. Some of them give you more HP, some of them give you more damage, and they have different effects. The one I use the most is Vainglory, as it just gives you more damage. I think it has one downside, but I forgot now, but it's pretty much super worth getting. And if you have the time and patience, just get every single forge enhancement. Now we're going to move on to damage boosting items. So about two years ago I made a video on all damage boost items that are higher than 15%. It's a little bit outdated, but you can watch it anyways. I also made a video on every 51% damage weapon only 5 months ago, and every 75% weapon only 2 months ago. The 75% weapons only target a specific monster type like Chaos, Dragon, Elemental. But 51 targets everybody, and yes, they do stack. And to understand how they stack and more about them, I just recommend watching my video over here. But if you want a simplified version on what to get first, go to Slash Ruin Lost Ruins War, kill this monster only 82k HP. 1% drop rate for the Burning Blade, it gives you 15% more damage. Once you reach level 80, you can start getting way better weapons though. You want to go to Celestial Arena, click on uh, Aranx, Final Fight, and walk into the room. Over here you want to kill him 20 times till he drops 20 champion sashes. And once he does, you can merge this for the Burning Blade of Abazet, which gives you 30% damage boost. After this, you want to get your first ever 51% weapon. So you go to Timing, and you do the Ultra Bosses here. And this takes 24 days of daily ultra bosses, but even then it's the easiest 51% weapon somehow. I think at day 16 you can stop doing the other ultras and you just have to do engineer if I remember correctly. But you can check out my guide also on YouTube. And after you get that, you want to start farming every single 51% weapon. As you can see I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 51% weapons right now. So you want to get them all so you can have different enhancements on each weapon. Now you also want to get items that boost your gold and XP. The one I use is really easy to get and it's seasonal, Carla's Living Head. I think it's available around August so quite a long time away, but you can get the Head of the Legion Beast. Now this is actually pretty difficult and will take you some time, but it is worth it because of the extra gold, XP, reputation and so on. However if I had to guess I think you'd save more time just farming with a worse XP boost, but farming the amount of time you did using this. And another seasonal item you can get is that Slash Joint Pirates, and that is the Polly Roger pet. This pet doesn't take up your weapon slot or your armor slot, and it gives you 30% damage against all these different races. Super worth it, had it for years, it's a must get once it's around September. And finally, the best ever boosting item for XP you can get is All Sended. You go to Slash Room Museum and you want to go to the crossroads and click on Teresa. As you can see, this is a ascended armor. It gives you 50% reputation, 30% gold, and 50% class points. So it's really long and difficult to get. However, it does have huge boosts and that makes it kind of worth it. The next thing we're going to cover is Ultra Bosses. So pretty much every Ultra Boss has something useful to give you. And in Tymin, it is the Exalted Apotheosis. In Ultra Nulgath, it is Rowan Geniums for VHL. In Ultra Dage, it's to give you tokens for Legion Revenant. 
In Ultra Tyndarius, you get a good 75% weapon over here. And it's also needed for other stuff. And there are plenty more Ultra Bosses and they're all very good at giving you something. But some of them are incredibly difficult, like Ultra Speaker, which is the hardest in the game. I did make a guide on how to beat this and some other Ultra Bosses. So check them out as well as other YouTube videos. There are a few classes you need to even stand a chance against these. And these include Art Paladin, Stone Crusher, Lord of Order, Legion Revenant, and even some Chrono classes like Paladin Chronomancer. There are other classes too like Lightcaster, and some Ultras are so easy you only need a single class. Some of these Ultras are weekly like uh, the first speaker, and others are daily so you can only do them once a day. Depending on how hard the Ultra is, you'll need some teamwork, coordination, and good classes obviously, and also some enhancements, potions, and some really difficult enhancements like Penitence as a cape enhancement. So make sure to be well prepared before you do these ultras, except for the timing ultras which are actually quite easy. Next, let's cover the story mode. So in my opinion, the best story in the game is the Chaos Saga. And that is the 13 Lords of Chaos. As you can see, I've ticked off all the stuff I've done here. And I'd highly recommend you do this, not only because it gives you good reputation for doing some of these stuff like Archigo reputation, but also, it's just the most entertaining story in all of AQW. Other people will recommend you do the Darkon Saga, which is also quite entertaining, but doesn't have good rewards. In my opinion, the second best saga in AQW is Throne of Darkness. A ton of good rewards, entertaining storyline, and definitely worth doing. And once you complete the 13 Lords of Chaos, you can get the Chaos Slayer class. And at Mount Doom Skull, you can do a quest which gives you 5k reputation every single day. Obviously this is really broken and make the most of it when you can. And finally we're going to cover the seasonal events of this game. One of the most important happening right now is the AC giveaway event. So you can donate ACs and as you can see 126 million have been donated, 6,000 people have received it. I donated about 5k myself. This is mainly because once you donate 5k you reach tier 2 and in January 3rd I think you get these rewards. You can read through them yourself, but some of these are really good. If you donate 5k, you get all the items in the merch shop. And I mean this merch shop, the, which has the Glacier and Warlord class, and a bunch of other good items. So this is probably the best event of the year, but there are also other important events you need to be aware of. In October, there are a bunch of good seasonal classes coming out, and in November too, which you've probably just missed. Those classes include Vampire Lord, which you can get in October, super good farming class if you haven't got Legion Revenant already. In November you can get Abyssal Angel, Ultra Omni Knight, some other classes. They all cost ACs so they're not that good but worth checking out anyways. And coming soon we have the Nolgath birthday. As you can see someone on Reddit made a very good chart here which shows pretty much every important event happening such as Nolgat's birthday and Gage's birthday and the one happening right now, Frostfall. So if there's any seasonal classes you're looking out for, make sure to check these out. You can get Legion Doom Knight in Gage's birthday, which is useful. More on that later. And finally, we're going to discuss how to spend your ACs and if you should get membership. So by now, a lot of you may have a ton of ACs. The obvious thing you want to do is join the Legion if you haven't already. Just click Shops, Armor Shop, and you want to buy this. Complete Gage's quest to join the Legion before 24 hours so you can sell this and in total it will only cost you 120 ACs. After that you want to get Lightcaster unless you're like a fully end game player and you have every class because Lightcaster is amazing at pretty much every role in AQW. So definitely buy Light Mage for 1k ACs and you want to go to Celestial Realm and once you actually buy Light Mage you have to do a few quests to actually unlock Lightcaster and this is definitely worth it for 1k ACs. Also you have to be level 80 so maybe don't do it if you're not close to level 80. And after that you may be wondering is there a class worth buying for 2k ACs? Because there are a ton of classes here that are 2k ACs and I would say pretty much none of these are worth it because all of these are farmable. The only ones I would say are actually worth it is Archfiend which I mentioned earlier in the video being a class you can farm at and it takes a while, but it's worth it. You can also buy it for 2k ACs if you want to save some time. Soul Cleaver requires you to join the Legion, but it's not hard to farm, so don't spend 2k ACs on it. And with the rest of your ACs, I would just recommend buying more inventory. It's about 200 ACs for 1 space and 2000 for 10. Even if you don't buy any, you'll get some about once a year, you'll get plus 10 inventory spaces. 
This happens around October, November, I think. And that's the only reason I have so much inventory space. And finally, you can just buy loads of cool cosmetics. Like if you look at this month's 10K chest, there are actually some really cool items here. And if there's any that you really like, just buy it. You can farm pretty much all the good classes in this game. And once you have them, the only things really worth spending money on are some really good cosmetics. For more extended research, you can watch my video on best 2KC classes. This one is outdated, so watch my more recent one, which was made about 4 months ago. And finally, in terms of buying membership, I would say buy it. Membership in AQW is definitely worth it, at least for the first few months. And if you really want to make up your mind, watch these two videos on what to do when you're a member. Because if any of these pique your interest, definitely get membership. Especially if you're a low level player, it's a lot easier to farm reputations and much more. And that is the end of this video. If you have finished doing all the hardcore farms you want in this game, I'd recommend picking a random area of the map and just completing it for fun. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel and see you guys next time.